Hello, guys. In this video, we're going to be going over another AP Statistics free response question. This is in Unit 4, Probability and Random Variables. In the Practice of Statistics Updated 6th Edition textbook, you'll find this in Chapters 5 and 6, dealing with the probability stuff. Uh, this is specifically from 2010 Form B, free response question number 3. So if you would like, there is a scoring guideline linked up here. And you are welcome to uh, go to that link, try the question yourself, and see how you do compared to the scoring guideline. As always, I'm going to go over the questions. So uh, if you want to um, pause the video as I as I present the question, and then you can try the question on your own before you see how I go over it. Uh, this has two parts. I can't display the second part because it's too long to fit on the screen. So we'll just focus on part A right now. All right, question. Uh, 2010B, uh, number three, a test consisting of 25 multiple choice questions with five answer choices for each question is administered. For each question, there is only one correct answer. Let X be the number of correct answers if a student guesses randomly. The student guesses randomly from the five choices for each of the 25 questions. What type of probability distribution is this? Justify your response by checking conditions and naming the important parameters. All this to say is for this type of question, you really want to identify, you know, is this a, a binomial or a geometric in this case here? In other words, do we have a fixed amount or are we are we going until? So what I like to do is, uh, you know, identify my bits or bins. Is it bits or bins? Is it until? Or do we have a set number of trials? In this case here, we have a set number of trials. Can you guess what it is? That's 25. All right. We have 25 questions. OK, now, what is our probability of success? Our probability of success. Would be getting the question right. And if there is a uh, there are five answer choices for each question, then the probability is going to be one out of five or point two. OK, so the probability of success equals point two or one fifth. And our number of trials, n equals 25. So we got this, guys. n is 25, and the probability of success is 0.2 or 1 fifth. Of course, it's binary. Um, it's either going to happen. You're going to either get it right, or you're going to get it wrong. There's no middle ground. And independent, meaning that no question is going to affect each other one. So we have our set number of trials. But most importantly, it says what type of probability? This is a binomial. Binomial. So we want to make sure we write the word binomial in this case here. If you don't put the word binomial, you won't get it correctly. Um, so it's not going to be geometric. Um, bits would be geometric. So I'm going to go over here and just kind of cross that out over there. Um, bins is what we're looking for. Binomial. Binary, independent, set number, and the probability of success does not change. It's, it's 0.2 or one fifth. And that's all for part A, just identifying the correct probability. Part B, this test, like many multiple choice tests, is used scoring a penalty for guessing. The test score is determined by awarding one point for each question answered correctly, deducting 0 0.25 point for each question answered incorrectly, and ignoring any question that is omitted. That is, the test score is calculated using the, fo the following formula. Score equals 1 times the number of correct answers minus 0 0.25 times the number of incorrect answers plus 0 times the number of omits. For example, the score of, for a student who answers 17 questions correctly answers 3 questions incorrectly and omits 5 questions is scored 1 times 17 minus 0 0.25 times 3, 3 incorrectly, plus 0 times 5 equals 16.25 since they omitted five questions. Get the gist? All right, now let's look at the question down below, OK? Um, suppose a student knows the correct answers for 18 questions, 18 questions. Answer those 18 questions correctly and chooses randomly from the five choices for each of the other seven questions. Show that the expected value of the student's score is 18 when using the scoring formula above. So let's just kind of focus on the formula for a minute. 
and we're going to write a couple things on here. Okay. Suppose that a student knows the correct answers for 18 questions. Okay, that's given. All right, student knows those 18 questions. So guess what? Um, they're going to get those 18 points. But is that all the questions are going to get right? Well, not necessarily, because it says we answer those questions correctly and then chooses randomly from the five choices for each of the other seven questions. So no omits. No omits in this question chooses randomly from the five choices for each of the other seven remaining questions. Um, so it says show that the expected value of the student's score is 18 when using the scoring formula above. Well, that's, that's funny. We'd think it'd be more than 18, right? Because they're going to get 18 right. So let's think about what's going to happen here. There are seven questions, right? Seven remaining questions to get to that 25. Students going to randomly pick um, from the five choices for each of those seven questions, right? So the, the expected value for those five questions, or for those seven questions, The expected value for just those seven questions is going to be, um, well, it's going to be one-fifth or 0.2 times seven, right? Where we got seven questions remaining times uh, 0.2 or times one-fifth. Multiply those together. What do you get? So the expected value for those seven questions is 1.4, meaning that if you're just guessing randomly from seven questions, you would expect to get 1.4 correct. Okay, so think about that. If I'm gonna get, if I'm expected to get 1.4 correct, how many I'm gonna get incorrect? Well, there's seven questions. So seven minus 1.4, so that's 5.6. That's going to be how many I get incorrect. And again, no omits, right? Students just picking each answer out of those. So let's go back to this formula. Then. I got one times the number of correct answers. Well, I had the 18, but there was 1.4 expected, right? So 18 plus 1.4. I'm going to put those in parentheses here. So that's really 19.4 questions the students expected to get right. And it's going to get a point for each of those. And then we're going to subtract uh, a quarter point, deduct a quarter point for the number of incorrect answers, which in this case is 5.6. And we're going to add zero for the number of mits, which, which in this case is zero, right? There, we're not actually going to omit any, but that's going to be zero regardless. So my, my expected value is going to be, let's see, 1 times 19.4. minus 0.25 times 5.6. Now you do the math. See what you come up with. Oh my gosh. Well, this is 19.4. Then that is 1.4, isn't it? A quarter of 5.6, 1.4. So guess what that uh, combines to? Oh my gosh, that's 18. So my expected value, if I get, if I know I'm going to get 18 questions right, and I randomly guess the other seven, is still going to be 18. Now it's not asking should you or should you not. It's just saying show that you get 18. And there we have it. We have shown that we got 18. Thank you for watching. That is again a, a free response question three on the 2010 Form B AP Statistics exam. Signing off, Mr. Weiser.